welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am your host with the most, Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by my co-host, Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing. And we are here to rush the vibe with our tribe. What up, what up, what up? Hey, tribe, hey. Back up in this. <laughs> in this what, sir? In this mother. You know. Woo, woo. That's not gentleman speak. Oh, I'm sorry. Anywho, we're here. I guess here. at some point you assumed I was a gentleman. Yeah. I didn't marry no vagabond. Whatever. No ruffian. Ruffian. Raffian. Okay. Sorry, it's going to be loud. I'm opening a drink on. Why on didn't you set. open your drink before? If I had done this, y'all, you, y'all know how petty he is. If I had done this, you would have told me about it. And everyone knows you would have told me about it. You're going to see comments. Anywho, so we're here. A lot has happened since our last episode. But before we get into it, I'm taking the lead on this. As you saw on social media, as David was sharing last week's episode he really made it seem like i forced him into the strip club i did not he is not innocent he knew where we were going he was aware of it now maybe i'm too new age of a wife that i'm like hey let's go do a strip club together uh i mean it, we're not swingers or anything you're just like let's go but he made it seem like i held him at weapon point to get him into this place he knew he was asleep at the rooftop bar we went to first asleep and we were plotting to stick him in an uber and send him back to the hotel and he was like nah i'm good i'm good i'm good i'll come so he knew he was coming i feel like it's different for women in strip clubs like i don't really care uh like i'm there for the vibes and i'm like oh i acknowledge that you know a couple of the ladies were a little lazy i was a little underwhelmed um and then, you know, he tried, like, listening back to it, I was like, he really tried to pin me out to be this bad guy. And, oh, we have daughters, and I'm a married man, and blah, blah, blah. Like, you're assuming that these strippers are not, like, pursuing nursing and legal degrees and all of this stuff. Like, we, we box them up. Maybe they just choose to strip. So, I just wanted to infiltrate that information into the episode before because i feel like people out there reading this and like dang what kind of wife is jessica why is she taking her husband to a strip club but like there were there are so many more details that were left out and i just i felt as if i needed to redeem myself so there we go may i respond i suppose i heard the phrase uh tongue-in-cheek you know, tongue, yeah, someone says tongue yeah, in cheek. Yeah, that's the whole, my whole uh, uh, retelling of our experience at the strip club was all tongue in cheek. So obviously I wasn't being serious. But you know what probably happened? You know what I can assume? Is your little friends, yeah, your little friends probably got in your ear. Actually, you know, I like, haven't spoken to anyone. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I was listening yeah, to the podcast yeah, yeah, and I yeah. was like, yeah, yeah. What you mean? Bro. Listen to the and podcast. Then, you were sitting here when we were having a discussion. I know, but sometimes, like, I'm very notorious of like, like you what? Like, you not, li- not like, listening? Like, oh, when yes. We argue. Yes, you are very notorious. Fact, I think of all of the things I should have said, and I don't. So while I was listening to the pod, I intentionally waited till right before we recorded this episode to listen to last episode, so I would have my rebuttals fresh in mind. And I needed where, to come so at you. Where, where did I? Where did I imply? No, but you just all you, I said. You, no, wait, 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 first of all, wait a minute, all I, didn't I realize, said. I didn't realize I, you actually said scatter ass. Yeah, scattered ass. And I was just anyway because somebody posted that, somebody shared it and wrote like there were scattered and, ass. But in I there. didn't realize you actually said that. You were you were you reacted to me saying it. Anyway, I just needed to defend I, myself. I'm just, no wait, no wait, no wait. We're gonna because we're gonna sell this. <laughs> what point? <laughs> All I said, okay, so what I said, yeah, we're going to take a 30-second time out. (laughs) All I said was that took me to a strip club. Is that not true? You and your, you and your friend, you and your, no, 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 no. You and your crew decided to go to a strip club, right? Yes. Yes. So that was the plans of the group that was made. 
I happened to wake. I was asleep. Yes, on the rooftop. I was asleep because it's freaking 3 a.m. In terms of uh, the clock that my body is on, even though it may have only been midnight where we were. So, yeah, I took a little power nap. But I was like, nah, I came out to Vegas with my wife. It's for my first time being in Vegas. Her first time being in Vegas, not pregnant. So I'm going to tag along whether I'm thrilled or not. I'm going to go along. So I said, oh, y'all going to strip club? Cool. I was a little worried about my attire considering I had on a blue polo and some khakis looking like I was at my first day at Walmart. But that's okay. Neither here nor there. Because I'm rolling for my boot. So, yes. Y'all took me to a strip club. (laughs) I was there. There was scattered ass about. There were lazy strippers. You left me several times. I was trying to stay focused. I was like, you weren't even realizing you were in conversation. I was looking dead at you. That way I wasn't tempted to look at everything going on in my peripheral, but you left. So I had no choice, but to get to, to glance about. There was, there was not EDM music playing in the strip club and no one says you couldn't glance about. I feel like it's, it's obnoxious and it was, and, to be like, Oh, let's and, go to a strip club. Don't look anywhere. And look, it ain't got nothing to do with it, but you. It's about me. Okay. And my standards. But you, <laughs> <laughs> you just came no. off as such a victim. I was like, he's I was not, a vi- I was he's victim. Not going to. I was. Act like I was a victim. a victim. America. I was. He was not. I was a victim. Anyway, another. I so I don't. This. I don't know. Where, I don't appreciate you ambushing me like this. <laughs> Who think I'm thinking we're gonna come in? We're gonna get this recording done. We're gonna hit the road again. Because that's what we do here. We Rush vibes. Moves. We take. Take. You know, spontaneous we make trips. Money moves. And off the cuff, like I'm I'm sure. You know what that is? It's that stay woke mentality. Oh, <laughs> so so Jessica, my friend Jessica. Oh, um, so we shot we can drop names on the pod now. Names. Oh, okay. Oh, that's fine. Um, I feel like you have to get to a status to get your name said. And we didn't say her name at all last episode. You that was like, on that was on purpose because she was complicit. <laughs> <laughs> so Jessica posted a status talking about she just got her first house. Congratulations. So now she's in that homeowner status. And she was like, homeowner problem number three million, blah, blah, blah. Her fire alarm is just going off. So I commented and I said, that's that stay woke mentality. And this dude's going to call me out and say, did you really make that comment on her post? Yes, it it is a stay woke. You know why I put that? Because it was corny. Do better. No. Get better material. No. It was corny. I said something corny and you about fell out the other day. <laughs> we were, I think I was talking about driving and I was like, oh, what did I say? It was so good. I said, um, I was driving and I, it, I felt like ludicrous and you like, you like <laughs> fell out. Cause I can imagine you driving and saying, move, <laughs> get out of the way. That's so, yes, that was funny. It's still corny, though. I mean, you can laugh at corny stuff. That doesn't mean it's not corny. I am queen of corny. Queen Um, corny. Yes, absolutely. Queen corny. I said queen of corny, not queen corny. Queen corny. You got them. Another thing that I wanted to correct. Um, So last week, apparently it was very funny, the frequency of which I said the word vagina. So I'm just we're just going to roll back into it. But I misquoted some fact. Um, so I just wanted to correct that because here at Rush Vibes, we like to hold ourselves accountable and state true facts. No, so not. the Honey Pot has not sold to a larger company. They did change their recipe. All of that is accurate. Uh, I think they changed it to make it more self stable, shelf stable, excuse me. Um, but they have not sold. That don't mean um, the black women with vaginas are not still mad. We are. I'm not like angry, angry. I'm just I just went back to Dove. The black so. women with vagina are there. Actually, you know what? I'm not. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna don't. ask that question. Okay. No, no. Go stay ahead. on the road that I that I'm Go on. Ahead. Follow Go the ahead. GPS. Go ahead. Don't Go ahead. detour. So I just wanted to correct that they had not. The company itself has not sold. People were just upset with the fact that they felt as if another black founded company had built its back, had been picked up by black women and had been abandoned. So um, I wanted to correct that. And then the backstory was. Target had made a commercial. Founder of the Honey Pot was in that commercial. She was talking about the ancestors and black entrepreneurship. White people got mad. Not all white people. Some white people got mad, started giving her bad reviews. And that's when black women were like, oh, we're not going to let our sister go down. On and on and on. Um, vaginal wash. 
now the recipes change and people's vaginas aren't happy. That's can it. you can you just say this in a tweet or like a Facebook post? Like, do we have to waste ninety seconds of our of our podcast for you to correct your misinformation that you? <laughs> it wasn't misinformation. <laughs> it the was, fake news that you it put out fake last news, week. It's factual news. No, you were misleading the public and saying that but they that sold. But that is a segue to what? To our conversation about blackness. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about. Are we going to go heavy first? Might as well get it out the way. Like ludicrous. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so oh, as you. everyone knows, um, there has been another shooting. Um, unfortunately, it was a school shoot. Actually, it doesn't matter where it was. It, a shooting is unfortunate. Uh, that took place in Uvalde, Texas, about 85 miles short of, shy of, south of um, San Antonio. Is it Uvalde? Uvalde. Uvalde. Dang. I yeah, keep... see, I thought you were, I thought you were current on I am current. I'm current on the fact that there was a school shooting that took place. You don't place. know where. So now people are going to go Google, where's Uvalde? Where's Uvalde? There's probably Uvalde. <laughs> sure, there is Uvalde. It might not be in Texas. It's so. not. I'm sorry. Um, you know me. Y'all know me. I'm bad with names. Um, and words. And words. And phrases and like, the English language. Like Tori Linez. Um Anyway, yes. So there was an unfortunate school shooting that took place. I I have my opinions. I'm going to let you. T- I'm a. I'm a assist it over to you you lead it because i i have if i continue with the way i'm taking this conversation we're not going to talk about the facts and i don't know that we actually need to talk about the facts because i feel like everyone knows what what happened my issue which should be everyone's issue is the fact that there was yet again another school shooting what makes it worse is the fact that I didn't realize how many other shootings have taken place in the year already. I think the number is 290 um, mass shootings. I don't know if that's including what happened last week or or what. I don't know how many people need to be in, involved in a shooting to classify it as a mass shooting. I think it's two. Is it? Is two or more. Three or more. Something like that's not okay. a very... Not what you would think. It's not as high a number as you yeah, would think. Yeah, because when I think mass, I think, you know, mathematical and you right. mass. So... Uh, Apparently, there was even a shooting after the Buffalo shooting. Uh, someone walked into, I think it was a Taiwanese temple mm-hmm. and, and shot. And that was kind of brushed over. So that makes you wonder in terms of how many people need to be in a mass shooting for it to even make it to mainstream news to be discussed. Why we know, why there are so many mass shootings? Why are we... Tar- I, I mean, back... And I hate to say it like this so casually, but back in the day, school shootings, it was usually a student who went to the school who was kind of had been bullied, pushed to their 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 breaking point, steal their parents gun, go to school, shoot the people who were bullying them. Now you've got people who are just going into schools that they don't attend and shooting completely innocent children as a mom, as a parent. I am overwhelmed with emotion. I think I said it last week when we were talking about Buffalo that it shouldn't be a luck of the draw to go to the grocery store, to go to Target and get out safe. That it shouldn't be like, oh, like, yes, you, for those of us who are Christians, like we pray. I was always taught to pray, you know, let our going out and coming and be a blessing, like protection, all of that stuff. But, it shouldn't that's not how life should be and it definitely shouldn't be that way in school elementary school middle school high school college like there are just certain places that are supposed to be protected you you know as a parent you dress your kid up you put them their backpack on either you put them on the bus or you drop them off at school you watch them walk into this building and you anticipate either picking them up and they're perfectly fine. There should be no threat of someone strolling into your child's school and shooting for the simple fact that they are angry and have access to a weapon. What frustrates me the most is, again, like everyone else, which becomes redundant, everyone else is frustrated with thoughts and prayers. Okay. 
I'm frustrated with it. Politicians are frustrated with it. Steve Kerr is frustrated with it. Like, everyone is, is tired of thoughts and prayers. Okay, look at you, Steve Kerr. See, okay. you sleep on me. I do. Snoozing. You don't, you sleep Coma. with me, not on me. Coma. I'm going to put that on Straight. the shirt. Sleep with me, not on me. Um, no? Okay. Um, he's frustrated. Everyone's tired. Like, don't even bother thinking and praying because it's not doing anything. What I've come to realize with school shootings, mass shootings, is, and I'm going to say this bluntly and people will be offended, the wrong people are being shot. Middle class and poor people are being shot. They are not considered significant enough to take a stand. Think about when, I believe her name, Gabby Giffords out of Arizona. When she got shot, she and her husband made a complete pivot in terms of their stance on gun control and gun rights. The wrong people are being attacked. The wrong people are being shot. As long as regular American citizens are being, are the victims of mass shootings, nothing's going to change. And that sounds terrible, but we are expendable. We are not, we are, you know, we are a dime a dozen. Now let Warren Buffett's granddaughter be somewhere and get shot. That's going to be a big deal. A president's daughter, a former president's child, um, you know, a billionaire, a Kardashian, someone of substance. Where they're in the mainstream, they're known on a regular basis. That's when... Things are going to get taken. Think about coronavirus. People stopped taking. People were like, oh, coronavirus. What is this? Tom Hanks got it. And everyone was like, Lord. Tom Hanks? Uncle Tom? Not the cabin, Uncle Tom. Tom Hanks. Okay. You're saying Uncle Tom? Uncle Tom. Not the one with the cabin. <laughs> Uncle Tom Hanks. Um, he got it. And I felt like that was my moment. Where I was like, man, Tom Hanks got coronavirus? I don't know why Tom Hanks was significant enough. But it was like, wow. And then on a black stance, when Idris Elba got it, I was like, Lord, black people can get it too. So that that is my perspective. If And it's it's so hard for me to have to say it. It's so hard for me to, to let the words come out of my mouth. But that's the fact of the matter. The reason why there's no... There are no true repercussions. There are no true protections. There's only thoughts and prayers are because regular Americans, regular, regular Americans are the ones who fall victim. It's not anyone in Beverly Hills, in Manhattan. Like it's, it's regular citizens. And we are not significant enough for the government to say we, we need to protect them. And it's, what adds on is America puts itself on this pedestal that, you know, we're so great and freedom and all of this stuff. And I remember when, you know, suicide bombers were always in the news when we were in Afghanistan and Iraq and they would portray them on the news. They would portray these countries like they're savages and, you know, who would do this to their people. But it's exactly the same thing that's happening here. It is terrorism. People who don't need to have weapons have weapons and are attacking innocent people and no one is doing anything to stop it. And now you have generations who are filled with trauma. Those kids who survived, are they ever going to, how, how do you tell your child who survives a school shooting to go back to school? Fortunately, it's the end of the school year, but I saw an interview with one of the little boys who said he had to play dead. He still got shot in the leg. But he played dead. Is that something we need to teach our kids in the case that this happens and someone near you gets shot, smear blood on you and play dead? That is that is trauma. And then you wonder why, like, our generation went through stuff. And yeah, I knew about Columbine. There were several others. But these are small children. And the fact that the place that they learn is not even safe and and there are kids who their home isn't safe so if home's not safe school is supposed to be your safe haven and if school also isn't safe i just i, I i'm i'm over it i don't necessarily want to i feel i know for a fact more school shootings are going to come more mm -hmm. mass shootings are going to come yep. and i don't want to blanketly say I don't want to discuss another one ever again. But in my heart, that's how I feel. Because 
it's such a it's almost like when we got to the point of the pandemic when they were just like this many people have died from coronavirus this many people are hospitalized from coronavirus you the num it becomes callous where it's just it's not it's not a surprise anymore the fear isn't there anymore it, it, you know we've got nightclubs that have been shot grocery stores that have been shot um concerts that have been shot schools that have been shot homes that have i mean there's no safe place trains buses plant like every nowhere is safe so it's re we're really in a society where we are being conditioned and taught to accept the fact that there is a chance that when you step out into the public world you can get shot by someone who has access to a gun that that's what it is anything else i'll cut you off at some point <laughs> course <clears throat> you seem a little worked up i am i mean i'm mm -hmm. annoyed and i just don't the whole like, you know i need to have my gun <laughs> <laughs> i need to have my gun i need to protect my house all of this stuff um that's great and i don't dispute the fact that you need to have a gun and protect your house I don't think you need an assault rifle. I also don't see the fear. If you are just protecting your home, what is the big deal about register? Like, like there are precautions. I think if you're a gun owner, you should have insurance. Like a vehicle is a weapon. Like think about all, uh, think about organizations like mad mothers against drunk drivers. There were enough moms who lost their children either because they were drunk drivers or at the hands of a drunk driver that they coalition together and they said, we need to do something to stop this. A vehicle is a weapon. It is a weapon. Or you, it can be. It can be a weapon yeah. if misused. People, you know, you make the conscious decision to go out to drink and then to drive. You, you now have a weapon. You are now armed with a weapon. If you hit and kill somebody that you get charged, you go to jail, all of that stuff. So why isn't the same? Because, you know, people will say guns aren't dangerous. People with guns aren't dangerous. Gun doesn't get up and shoot. Yeah. OK, we get all that. But I think if someone purchases a gun, they need to have weaponry insurance. There needs to be a state farm division and you pay a monthly premium for owning a gun. I, I, I mean, I think there needs, there need to be more parameters in terms of gun ownership. And I just, I don't, and and I don't know enough about guns to know, like a, I know a pistol. I know Glock. I recently found out that the line, um, it's hard to yell with when the barrels in your mouth, <laughs> Was referring to a gun. Um, I didn't know that. I I have sung I sung Bring 'Em Out since I was like thirteen. Um, what's the song that Jay Z says that same line in? Um, no, he does say it in that. So I was just like, oh, Burrell is something French. Like Burrell is hard to yell when the, I don't know. I am a sheltered girl from Massachusetts, um, and I was driving one day and heard it, and I was like, barrel. The barrel of a gun. Ha. Huh. Um, anyway, that was such a such a side tangent. But I know a pistol. I know a Glock. I know AK-47. I don't... I You don't need an AK. And I know a shotgun. Solely because I see it in movies and people, you know, make that noise. And it scares the bejesus out of someone. I don't... I don't understand why any type of weapon that can shoot out so many rounds in a short period of time is necessary for the average american person to have access to if i wanted to i could get a permit i could go buy one of these guns that's not okay because i don't need that gun a regular pistol okay you know how many bullets eight bullets if i'm not mistaken go in a pistol Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think so. I'm, that's just mm -hmm. a, a number I'm throwing out. I'm sure there is a pistol that takes eight bullets. Um, <laughs> if someone bursts into my house and I have a lock, 
box and I open the box and I get my pistol out, I feel as if if they don't have access to some crazy artillery and they're coming into my house with a pistol and and I have a pistol, like the odds are 50 50 like we, we we got decent odds but the fact that any regular regular american citizen with the exception of those who have felonies and all of that stuff but even so there's always a way that someone can get these things from you know some random country that's in war that america supplied them with the guns anyway um it's just not it's not cool and this guy was a kid 18 is is a kid like i know legally at 18 you're an adult you're some parents think that that's a good age to like kick their kids out like i got you to 18 child support stops all of that craziness but 18 is still a child now you have degrees of maturity at 18 you know there's some people are very mature at 18 some people are not mature at 18 but at the end of the day 18 is still a child and there's absolutely no reason an 18 year old should have had access to that kind of weapon there's absolutely no reason that an american citizen who is not in the military who is not in some special law enforcement agency should have access to that kind of weaponry that's where i stand i'm not saying give me give up your pistols i'm not saying all of that stuff I don't know why people are so scared and I don't know why people are so defensive of protecting their guns, but not concerned about the hundreds of thousands of citizens who are not going to graduate elementary school, graduate kindergarten, graduate high school because there is a school shooting. People who went to the grocery store to get a carton of milk and couldn't come home because someone targeted them. I don't know why that's not a concern, which loops back to my original point. The wrong people are be, are victims of mass shootings. And you're on fire. This girl is on fire. <sighs> um, yeah. That's, uh, there's a lot. That was. There's and you let there. me go. Normally um, you interrupt me. <clears throat> well, I felt like with respect to the topic you know you as a mother who uh has kids and one kid the age like our daughter if we lived in <clears throat> this town would have been at that school mm-hmm. what could have been in in that mm-hmm. elementary school uh we have two more you know coming up behind her so i mean these these kind of things you know they hit you differently as you you know go forth in life and your circumstances change, right? Like school shootings when, you know, Columbine was like, oh, wow, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, this is wild. But This will never happen again. Huh? This will never happen again. Well, yeah, well, you hope hope not. Yeah, you figure. Um, But it didn't really affect me like a school shooting does now because it's like, oh, my God, like, this could be any town, any school, anywhere mm-hmm. could be ours. It could Your be Charlotte. Could I won't tell you where we live. You know, you know, it could be Charlotte. Like I, it, it, so it's like, oh wow, this is this stuff. Like these events aren't you know going away. It's something uh, that we'll have to live with. So <clears throat> yeah, I want to give you the space to to say whatever you felt like you needed to say. I don't want to cut you off. I'm not. It's not, it's not a dictatorship here. It's not. I appreciate that. I mean, I'm the executive producer and you're the talent, but it doesn't mean that I, you know, don't give you the the space to express yourself. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's no problem. So, yeah, I, this is like the second week in a row where we've had to talk about a mass shooting and my my thoughts and opinions haven't really changed. Um... I'm, I continuously find myself caught between this place of uh, especially uh, black people because I'm breaking news. I'm a, I'm a black man uh, should learn how to uh, you should get their necessary permits and should know how to operate, handle a uh, firearm, buy one legally, uh, pr- you know, use it. So whether at you're you're familiar with it. Um, and have it to protect themselves or sport or whatever legal things you can do with it. Um, and there are reasons for that, obviously, but I won't, 
dive into them because that'll take us on a sure. different different path. Uh, but then I also feel like there's just already so many guns out there. Um, and again, we always hear <laughs> like we just need more guns. Like we need good guys. With guns. We need teachers with guns. We need principals with guns. We need more armed guards at at schools. And and I just keep thinking like, at what point does a good guy with a gun become a bad guy with a gun? Like, if you the New York Times, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, they ran on their front cover different dates of different shootings and the exact same text was written across at the top of each date it said the shooter purchased the gun legally purchased the gun legally like it was like 20 of them. like this was another instance where the the gunman purchased the weapon used to kill slaughter murder whatever word you want to use the victims bought it legally didn't come up on any any no red flags no history no nothing um and then he turned around and sometime later and killed 19 people 19 kids and and two teachers so you know i hear teachers should be armed i don't I feel like teachers should have <laughs> teachers should have a say in that, not the general public. Um, teachers are already in. We talk about the age of COVID, um, already almost universally underpaid. Um, I just don't know if that's something. I, I would hate to think that we would ever graduate to become a society where we are asking or or forcing our teachers to become like <laughs> become Snipers? like yeah like to to require them to know so how to like handle teacher a, work days and then like teacher yeah it's days, just i, I would i would shoot. just hate to think and then you know you hear things like oh there should only be one door in one door out. i think yeah i think your boy ted cruz said that my boy <laughs> i was like oh yeah let's only like that you heard of a fire hazard I know. ted <laughs> and i'm just i'm like oh my god people are really doing the mental gymnastics to come up with every think of every other possible solution yeah. other than Solving maybe we problem. should maybe we should actually take a look at how many guns are out there and how easy is it to obtain one should we make the standard to be a lawful gun owner higher than what it is and like no like even before you get to taking them which i don't think is necessary and i and you know the second amendment is a thing but just make the the bar higher like mm -hmm. it's such a low bar to get a gun it's 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 crazy and especially in texas where the governor changed the concealed carry like everybody can just carry a gun in in texas i mean anyone who can legally own one which again low bar could almost be anybody mm -hmm. um raised uh lowered the minimum age to one was 18 so the gunman waited till he was 18 to buy a gun and and then bought the a law. gun to follow the law. And so you always hear uh, criminals don't follow the law. Well, <laughs> the, last, do, the, last two, the last two dudes who shot up a grocery store and elementary riding. school respectfully waited until they were of legal age to buy the guns. So I'm just saying. Small sample size, of course. But I think the second amen amendment excuse don't, me, is... Don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Also, I'm not done yet. So, um, so don't do it or you just wanted to finish your both. point? Both. Don't do it. I'm, I'm just and maybe it. maybe you waiting will calm you down. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But it, I also want to talk about um, or mention, because, uh, you know, last week I wore my, my little hoodie. Mental health is health. The one I don't have. The one you don't have. We'll get you one. Uh, and, it's, and it's very important because everybody likes to kind of applaud and agree that, yes, mental health is important. Mental health is, is paramount and we should really be taking it seriously. And... Like you said, people will argue guns are the problem. It's a people problem, right? Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Not this we don't, season. We don't, we don't have a, <laughs> you know, we, got, we don't have a gun problem, Jessica. We got, we got a heart problem. It's people. That's our problem. It's not guns. It's people. But no one, no government 
federal state, it seems, is putting the necessary resources to mental health. Mm -hmm. Governor Abbott actually cut like 200 million some dollars. Yes. uh, From a department that could have moving forward. Can we just not mention his name? Sorry. The governor in Texas actually cut like 200 some million dollars from a department that could have helped with Mm -hmm. mental or that does help with with mental health. So it's like, don't say shit just to say it like don't say oh it's a mental health problem and then not have any follow-up don't have any action Mm -hmm. because then to jessica's point you're basically just saying that's just what we that's what that's what we'll say to get the gun control argument to go away and then we'll allow kids old older uh, elderly black people to get shot and killed when we find ourselves here again and then we'll just you know, repeat the same old talking points, mm-hmm. the same old misdirections, the same old deflections, and then we'll just do this ad nauseum until, you know, until we're not here no more. So I just, I, you know, as crazy as, not crazy, but I actually, when you said it, you were like, the wrong people are being killed in terms of something being done about gun control. I was like, no, that's not right. But as I heard you talk, I was like, oh, yo, you're actually right because nothing is actually being done. Mm-hmm. Like 9-11, it's, it is a pain to go do it. through TSA. Mm-hmm. Like it is an absolute pain. And 9-11 was a cause of all, like mm-hmm. it almost overnight, planes were grounded. I think planes were grounded for like two days or something like that. Flights were grounded. And then all of these changes. Yep. You can take your shoes off. You can take your belt off. Have you off. ever been to an airport before? I, uh, I don't think so. Uh, maybe, no, no, no. I remember vividly my my aunt. She had come to New York, and we took her to JFK. Um, and we went through security with her. I walked onto the plane, oh. like wa- not a passenger. I wasn't. I walked onto the plane. My grandmother had traveled one time. They walked like we had gone. I had been on planes. I, va- I vaguely remember. Mm-hmm. I think I I did fly to Texas once. I don't remember if it was it was pre. 9-11 or, or before. I think it was before because I remember my parents yeah, cause I was walking me through. You're older than me. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, walking me through like security or whatever. Like it was. So yeah, I kind of remember Travel was so that. easy. Yeah. I'd been on plane. I'd never flown. But at the time, I, I vividly remember walking onto a Ghana airplanes, Ghana Airlines plane, walking right onto her seat with my parents. And then we just left Walk the off. airport. No. But yes, 9-11 attacked it's hard to say the right people and it's really the people who were in the in the buildings and in the pentagon had it just been the plane that had crashed in the field i don't know that we can say that they would have gone Mm. through the same effort because those would have just been regular citizens and it's really sad that that has to be the thought process that the right people are not being killed and that's why no one is doing something because if a senator's child, if a senator, if, you know, remember when, and I don't even know what happened, but there was a shooting. I think it was senators who played baseball or softball. They were at a field. Some dude just showed up and started shooting. And I feel like they like, and it might've been temporary, but it's like when the right people are victims, change happens. Mm. Now this is not me. This is not me pre-writing somebody's manifesto and saying you need to go do no. Um, but it's just something that needs to be understood because clearly us as a regular citizens who are voting leaders into positions, our complaints, our hurt feelings, these parents who are losing kids who, you know, have to deal with people who are saying all of this is falsified. That's not enough for change to actually happen. OK, and clearly, you know, I don't obviously don't know the president but having to do two back-to-back weeks in two different states in the country you lead having to give essentially the same speech about death is not enough for change to actually happen it's disgusting it's pathetic and i know the rest of the world is like america clearly doesn't care about its citizens or it would do something about this and back to the second amendment People are all about, you know, right to bear arms and protect themselves. The amendments itself, like, the they evolve. Things evolve because where we were back in 1776, where we were a colony and we had, you know, our, co- our the British, the colonizers here, you know, enforcing taxes and laws and we wanted to 
we wanted to defend ourselves and become free, that's a different battle than the average American needing to defend their home. Because no one is coming to take your home from you or no one is is impeding on your inalienable rights. So I, I get the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. Yes, I'm not saying you don't have the right to bear arms, but you know, people bring up the same point, that they were muskets, and it took like seven minutes to put the bullet and the powder and the thing and then aim shoot all of that stuff i think people are not taking into account that we're in a different time no one is saying you don't have the right to bear arms it's in there we're not taking i'm not saying take that right away more responsibility needs to be added because in 1776 everyone couldn't just get up and get a gun there were a particular group of people who had access to guns probably aristocrats Probably people who came from money. And those were the people whose sons were, you know, fighting into the fighting the American Revolution. It wasn't just any Tom, Dick and Harry who could just walk into a gun store. Guns were different back then. We were in a new age. There are machines that can make ghost guns. There needs to be more regulation. That's all people are saying. And why there's if you're not doing anything wrong and you're a good guy with a gun, why are you so fearful of it being regulated? So the the devil's advocate <clears throat> devil doesn't the, need an I, the advocate. idea he's good the idea uh of a having insurance and and regulating gun ownership is ultimately that it creates a registry and that should uh the government decide uh should the you know democrats get a super majority or whatever and they decide to um ban certain types of guns it's now easier to go out into the country and find out where those guns are because there's literally a, there's essentially a registry of where each gun is located. So that's the, that's, I'm I'm not that per look, I told you, I grew, I grew, I grew up, I was probably like, God, I don't know, like six or seven before I actually knew what a gun was. Like I had no exposure to guns whatsoever. Like my, my dad was, he, was so hardline and this is a guy who went to war right was like no no guns so i'm like you know when people start i get older and start watching different movies and seeing guns like oh what's that and it's like oh it's a gun and then you start learning about it, obviously as you get older so i've lived a life both before and, and now as an adult where i don't feel like i need a gun to protect myself and my family um i did say that i've this i'm at at this point though i'm probably this is probably the most i've ever considered buying one Mm -hmm. but to this point i haven't because again to this point i haven't felt like i needed one um and i know that that's not everyone's circumstances but for me in terms of would I have a problem with a national gun registry no i wouldn't because i don't even know if i'd have one if i did okay like you you know where I live. You know where what kind of gun I have. That's no problem because you're not doing anything I'm wrong. Not, I'm not doing anything wrong. So I I have no and I'm not worried about <laughs> Joe Biden or any other <laughs> any other president, you know, deciding to turn into a dictator and us having to like citizens unite and fight the government. Because honestly, I don't think the if if that did come to pass the war wouldn't last that long. <laughs> it would be and over. It would be over pretty quickly. Um, so in my mind, I'm like, okay, it's, it's whatever. But there, there are people who have a distrust of government, um, have seen uh, the rise of the super radical left and progressive over the years and feel like for the first, maybe not for the first time, but feel like, you know, there's a legitimate threat of, gun confiscation by the government if you know there were to be other um if there were to be gun control measures instituted i think it's as simple as that Mm -hmm. um so that's why most people who you would think shouldn't have an issue with uh needing to buy insurance for a gun and whatever would have an issue with it because the fear is that it's just one small step and a path that leads to guns being confiscated. This would be my my thoughts. 
I just how I, I just don't get how powerful these people think that they are with their guns. Because I mean, and Grant, I don't know how much in TV shows are accurate, so but look, you think they can't me, scan your house and see what you have me, in it? Me, you think me, they can't send a drone to your house and just blow it up? Like, let me, you can't go to war against the American. Let me government. tell you. Let me tell you a story. It was so funny. I was working um, when I was training. You know, I was traveling a lot, so I was out in Atlanta, not in the Atlanta areas. So I was in Georgia, not. Atlanta. I was out in rural Georgia, um, working at this this client's house. And as as, as many clients do, they kind of get into what they do or whatever. Uh, and dude told me he was like, I think their group is called like Oath Oath Keepers. <laughs> so he was like, he was showing us like his his cabinet of guns, and you know he was an instructor. He taught people how to you know properly handle firearms, but said you know if. You know, such and such were to happen, you know, there's a bunch of us that would to defend. And I'm just thinking like, yo, these people are <laughs> serious about like that. Like people would literally die before they willingly handed over their guns or or made it. 60 percent more they would admit that than before it admit. Me and my words. They would rather die before handing over their their firearms or agreeing or submitting to a process that made it more difficult to purchase more. And it is absolutely fascinating to me, like the way people, the way certain people value their right to own a gun. It's literally like something that they would. It'd be like how we feel about the girls. It that's uh, like talking to this man looking at him and the, and, and the, and the, the, the passion and the seriousness with which he spoke about his guns, his firearms I was like, yo, I would, I, that's how I would talk about my daughters. Like if somebody were threatening my daughter's lives, that's how I would talk. And that's what people feel about the guns. Like some people, not everybody, not everybody out there who's a second yeah, amendment supporter. Just have guns. Like, yeah. And I'm not, I'm just talking about like the really serious, hardcore, like oath keeper type people. What and, oath are we keeping? <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm not that's not my I don't run with that's not that's not my circle. I don't run with those people. You, but I, I, I was find him. <laughs> just talking Let's to dude and he was he was just so serious. I was like I was like, "Oh, yeah." And, and then, may, maybe I've watched too many movies. Maybe. But at the end of I I obviously understand that there are limitations to freedom. Like yeah, we're free, but there's only so much. If you were truly free, yes, you could just go and shoot somebody. Free-ish. Free-ish. Since 1863? 65. Sorry. We were I'm supposed to, to be free. So much, I'm going to do so much editing this episode. <laughs> anyway, anyway. I, I, I am not... Again, I watch a lot of TV shows. I know I've seen you know silencing of reporters, people just disappearing, all of this fun stuff. But I've also seen like movies where they show where they can scan your house and they can see all of the stuff that's in it they got drone why it's almost narcissistic to think that you as a oath keeper and your organization genuinely have the power to prevent the government from doing something that the government truly wants to do the government locked us in our houses for two weeks They did like it, it. It this idea of an America that people think it should be, especially as a black person, that I think it should be that, and maybe because we're black, we understand that like freedom doesn't work the way it says it should on paper. Yes, all of these rights and amendments, and no, that's not factual. Like if the government really wants to take your weapons, they will bust down your door and they will take your weapons and you will disappear off of the face of the earth and no one will know what became of you. Like it's possible. I'm not oblivious to that. I'm not a true conspiracy theorist. I can go down a conspiracy rabbit hole, but I'm a firm believer that if the government wants to seize things from people, they will. And I'm and granted the hands made the handmaid's tale is just an extreme exaggeration, but she does. I've listened to interviews by her and she has talked about how the fact that everything that she's put in the book has happened somewhere in the world throughout history. So if they are under the impression that this dystopia is going to be created where 
you know, we there we are overly regulated. Like we would have done that. It would have happened already. Like they were already we're banning books. We're regulating, you know, women's organs and their bodies. I just I just don't to me it's cute that like how many oath keepers do we think there are <laughs> that can go against what probably first the National Guard and then, you know, you got all of your other army and unless they're infiltrated, unless the military is infiltrated with undercover oath keepers. Because that's a thing too. I've watched movies well, where those look, things have and, happened. And, and, I mean, I, and I and we're kind of slightly off off the deep end, but I don't even know if that would be possible. Because think about how many pro Second Amendment people actually serve in the military. So yeah. who knows to say? Who's to say? Like if this, but isn't their this, oath to government? I mean, that'd be a good question. Like, which oath is do you value more to, to serve the government and follow orders, or your constitutional right, as pointed out? You know, in the Second Amendment, like I don't know, like I know, it wouldn't be a problem. It, I wouldn't find myself in that position, personally. But I don't know. It could be. It could be a legitimate conflict for some people. That's why I don't do oaths. I stopped pledging allegiance years ago. <laughs> Not All the right. one. All right, Kaepernick. Um, yes. So very, uh, very sad uh, situation, and um, you know, we'll see if if anything happens but uh more than likely it won't and i think that's the most disappointing thing again as you said it's just that we've just as a country we've just accepted that it's this is what's gonna happen Mm -hmm. and that's 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 unfortunate it it really is because you're never gonna um we were listening to uh, the higher learning podcast on the drive home last night and uh van Lathan was was really worked up but he he said you're never going to get like an elementary school is never going to have the kind of defense that people are proposing. Like you, it's never going to be like and the it Pentagon. Shouldn't. Yeah. And it shouldn't, but you're never going to get like armed guards at every entrance. Uh, and they're probably going to be cowards who won't go inside and actually do protecting anyway. And there was a, there was a cop in, in, the, in, the, in the, or there was a security guard, armed security guard in the store in Buffalo. And we saw what, what happened. And, and that's um, not the first time that someone yeah. whose job is to serve and protect didn't actually or wasn't protect. able to try yeah. and, and wasn't able to. Yeah. So it's it's. But yeah, think about it. And that kind of goes to my point, though. And I want I want to move on. But but like I said, you know, if you give if the solution is to give more people guns, right? Like if everybody's walking around with a gun and then some some stuff pops off and everybody starts shooting one. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm y'all got it. I'm out. Let me get my, you know, let me get Post my SpongeBob. Let me, yeah, let me, I'm on my head out. Let me get my girl. If somebody's with me, let me get them. But we out of here. Straight Jesse Owens gone. So that's number one. But number two, unless you, you can go through all the simulations, you can play all the video games you want. But that heat of the moment hits different, and you don't know how you're going to respond Mm -hmm. until you find yourself in that moment. And it's literally fight or flight. And I already know I'm going to be flight. Like I I got and I don't feel think of myself as any less of a man. If my family's involved, obviously I'm going to do what I got to do. But if it's just me, look, I ran a four, three forty in high school. I can probably run like a solid four, six. I'm out. Bobbing and weaving and everything. I'm gone. I'm bobbing behind you. Gone. So, but my point is that we, we think that good guys mm-hmm. with guns can can kind of rally around and come together and attack a gunman. But you see the situation, you know, with elementary school, <laughs> the cop was like, hey, y'all got it. Y'all, hey, we're you know, we're, we're going to we're going to hold up and wait for Border Patrol. But y'all, y'all go ahead. Y'all, y'all got it. Well, kids is getting gunned down. And that's 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 a that's a light interpretation of what mm-hmm. happened. But the light. It, but it's kind of essentially based happened? on all the reporting that's come out and based on how many times the police department has changed their stories or their 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 official notes on the situation. Dudes was out like parents were trying to run into the building and they I were one mom actually got in, got her kids and got out. Yeah, I don't I, know if that's factual. Yeah, I don't know. But cops were attacked like like tackling and restraining parents from going in to get their kids and like you're not and not sending anyone else anyone further in and that's just that's that's heartbreaking to hear 
Um, I can't imagine willing, like willing, being willing to risk my life to go in to get my child and someone restraining me from doing like Mm -hmm. someone literally keeping me from doing so when they're not doing the job they're not they're not they're not the ones doing it and i don't care like i don't in that situation like i know i at that point i know i'm there's a high probability that i'm gonna die i'm gonna want to i'm gonna get my girl Mm -hmm. i'm gonna try to get my girl if if i show up and i'm not confident that the people who are there are are supposed to do are doing what they're supposed to be doing um or, or all that they could be doing so you got people who have police officers have taken oaths to to serve and protect who didn't necessarily jump at the bit to run up in there and face an armed gunman. I don't know what you think any regular Tom, Dick, but or Jane you know is going to do. Why? Because they recognize that this person had an assault rifle. Oh, yeah. Good guys with guns are going to have pistols. They're going to have Glocks. They're not going to have assault rifles. If you hear in, te- in Texas, people might be walking around. They with- might. They might. I take that back. <laughs> But that's that's the point where it's like, yeah, you can have someone conceal and carry or just out there seeing it on their hip. But to your point of when the moment hits, the perfect aim you have to have to shoot someone with an assault rifle in comparison to the imperfect aim a person with an assault rifle has to shoot. It's 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 a different game. It's like JV playing varsity. It's not like it's not apples to apples. And there's just other elements yes. like adrenaline, noise. Like there's just a whole like lot. You would of have to on. have the the perfect opportunity to stop, ready, aim, fire. Because <laughs> if you shoot at this person and miss, and they recognize that you shot at them and miss, you're gone. So the the whole argument of giving more people guns and all it doesn't it doesn't work. It's not going to work. You give teachers guns. By the time a teacher's, most teachers are instinctively going to protect their students. They're going to try and put their students in a place that's safe and then go get the gun. Like all of the logistics are not being thought. Well, that's out. assuming it's not on their hip. That is assuming it's not on their hip. But I would, I just don't know how. It, anyway, let's let's move on and talk about how Walmart and all these other corporations are exploiting groups. Because I can't keep talking about guns. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I will probably be back next week talking about another incident with guns. Um, whether Anyway. So, as you know, we are concluding the month of May. So, it's going to be June. Um, June is a great month. June Pride month. It's Pride month. But June is also, for those of us of the black... Of the black. Of the black what? Of the black. Of the black. Just gonna leave it of the black. Okay. Um, we celebrate Juneteenth. Now, with everything that's going on, that has gone on, you spent an entire year locked in your house. If you don't know about Juneteenth, that's a problem. Um, but it's when corporations will probably put a black box on their Instagrams mm-hmm. again. Um, you know, give people a day off. But Juneteenth, 19th day of June. It commemorates the day that enslaved blacks in Texas realized or were told that they were free. And it is a celebration. It is, you know, we're jubilant of that day. It shouldn't have taken an extra two years of enslavement, but that that is what Juneteenth stands for. In short, there's a lot more history to it, um, but I feel like we've already gone on on tangents. So... As in true American capitalist culture, corporations were like, oh, yay, you're black. You celebrate Juneteenth, we support you. So we got like that for a year. We, then it was like the next year, we'll give you the day mm, it off. Was, it was we, we hear you. We hear you, we see you, we're with you. We're with you, we're so, listening. Yes. So we got that, we got that in 2020. Mm-hmm. 2021, they were like, hey, we can make some money off of this. So I think that's when they started putting the marketing campaigns together. You know, you had Juneteenth festivals became a bigger thing. You know, people were starting to recognize that this is a big deal. I don't know that corporations recognized it from the perspective of man, slavery ended in 1863 and people were continued to be enslaved. Dang it. I'm really bad. My parents were born in 1963. So there are certain numbers that just like by default um, pop out to me. 65. Go edit that. Um, Slavery ended in 1865. 
I don't. The point I was trying to make, I don't know that they see it from the perspective that maybe black people see it from where it's like, wow, there there was a whole population of enslaved blacks who were still tortured and abused and used as cattle for two years when they should have been free. Granted, freedom has, I won't go down that rabbit hole, but two years. Corporations... I don't feel are seeing it from that perspective. That's the perspective I see. I see it from, even though it's a reason to rejoice, it's, I see it as painful. Like, can you imagine like finding out that your freedom was yours two years ago, but it wasn't yours? So now you have corporations that are, are, are doing what the capitalist society does, and they are making money off of it. And they are not going about it in the best of ways. Would you like to introduce it? No, nah, go ahead. I mean, you, you did everything else. So I... You set the table. Oh, Just go ahead. I felt, I felt a little slight in there. So I w- woke up, I want to say it was Tuesday. It might have been Tuesday. And... Um, I don't even know what day of the week it is now. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And I see this great value ice cream picture. And, you know, red black yellow green on it you know i think the fist was on it and i was like oh some black ice cream and then i read the caption and it's like one of those things where it takes you a minute to start processing like what's really going on here walmart took the time and paid people to have the audacity to come up with a product for Juneteenth. And allegedly, I haven't confirmed it, but tried to trademark the word. So they came up with this ice cream, which is red velvet ice cream oh, really? with cheesecake, with cheesecake swirls in it. Oh wow. So people were livid. People were like, oh hell no, Walmart did not. Because in no corporation's right mind would you think if you have black people in the boardroom, if you have the right black people in the boardroom would think let's capitalize on a holiday that yes, is something to rejoice about, but still has a, an element of mourning to it. So they pulled it after like, you know, when black social media, I'm not even going to limit it to black Twitter. When black social media <laughs> jumps on something, when the pioneer makes the initial post and then the rest of the the black oath keepers <laughs> the black social keepers jump on it if your company doesn't have the right pr team it could be you could be done like i don't even know how walmart is still standing because you know they've exploited and like, walmart ain't going nowhere they can't go anywhere but um and i say this as someone who's worked f- with walmart right they're not um, going nowhere. and for for their marketing um they pulled it. They recalled all of it off the shelf. But they really tried to present this ice cream as like a favor to black America. Like, oh, we are celebrating with you so much so that we came up with a great value ice cream. That is, is and I don't know if red velvet has become, is like a, is a unanimous black flavor. Like this is just. You can make, you can make the argument. So I read another post and they were like black velvet I mean red velvet cake wasn't even like created by black people. So they were like if you really wanted to do something for black like you should have come up with someone said like peanuts because of George Washington Carver and what he did with peanut butter and all of that. Like you could have done like a peanut butter or something. You could have done something that's actually like ethnically black. Like watermelon. <laughs> Do I need to give you the watermelon <laughs> spiel? I'm just saying, like, somebody, watermelon is not somebody, ethnically black. Somebody was probably in the board, like, oh, what about a watermelon flavor? And I'm glad that they shot that down. Uh, um, we can do like a side episode about watermelon and how the exploitation of black people with watermelon, because that's wrong too. Um, I mean, they use a lot of. Go ahead. Anyway, so red velvet is not something that black people came up with like i think it it might be french um and then cheesecake is also not so like there are other things maybe something pecan i don't know like 
we I don't even need to do this. Like that's not the point. Somebody said, let's mix and you know someone called out the fact that they had to put a white swirl in the in the ice cream. Uh, oh sorry. Um I can't I just can't even. So you've got that with Juneteenth. And they recognize, I will give them credit for how quickly they recognize that this was a bad idea. Because they ended up pulling it all off the shelves, recalling it, you can't find it anywhere. And so I saw a post, there is also, there is a woman who owns her own ice cream company. She's a black woman. And people were like, Walmart, if you really, not just Walmart, all corporations, if you really want to highlight blackness and support black culture and say that you you know we stand with you we are with you for juneteenth then you should have made the effort to find out every single black owned black founded company product in your stores and maybe made a special juneteenth magazine now people would have been upset well what about the white companies why it's got to be about color all right like we expect to hear that so we don't even care anymore but that would have been a way like drive sales to the companies that already exist because we already know how disadvantage how much at a disadvantage black owned businesses are in these spaces instead of saying aha we're going to come up with our own juneteenth flavor of ice cream like these companies are making money off of a group of people who for the most part will they will neglect until Juneteenth and February. You know what I think? You want some of this ice cream? I think it's the freedom for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was Dollar General, right? That had the uh, I think so. The, the napkins and the, yeah. the plates that said it's the freedom for me. Yeah. Um, so when you often hear about culture cultures uh it's kind of akin to what you would that's kind of like a prime example of it because you probably had some person who's who or maybe they contracted out you know some social media marketing person and they thought oh i've seen a lot of black people on twitter and in the culture you know saying oh it's the for me so why not do it's the freedom for me. Because I literally don't, have a t-shirt from Target that says that. This is It's the blank for me. It's not. Yeah, it just doesn't. No. Just stop. Put. Like, two things. One, like Jessica said, hi, use it as an opportunity to highlight disenfranchised, overlooked businesses in spaces where you feel like where your initial thought is to create a product, especially a retailer as big as Walmart. Mm-hmm. You've got so many different smaller uh, companies and vendors pushing products to your, uh, to your stores. I'm pretty sure they could have found somebody that they, whose brand they could have mm-hmm. put like either some marketing dollars behind or maybe move Free those malicious. products, you know, to a certain, I know with retail, like you want to buy spaces on certain zone. shelves. Yeah. And strike zones. Like maybe you push those products and then highlight them, work with the brand, collaborate, but yeah, it's just, it's just didn't have, it was just tasteless, you know, no pun intended. Uh, but the, yeah, the, the freedom for me. And then the, I mean, I saw all this and it's not really surprising because, you know, it was only made a federal holiday, I think last year, maybe the year before, I think mm-hmm. Biden signed it into law last year. You know, so you kind of knew it was coming. I mean, it's no different uh, than any other, you know, Black History Month, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, you know, it's. It's not surprising, but it's like, damn, like y'all really didn't learn nothing from the last couple of years. Uh, But uh, that's why here at Rush Vibes, um, a lot of the clothing that we wear are going to be from smaller, like direct to consumer brands from like Instagram, social media, uh, rather than, you know, 100 percent from the large big brands that you normally see participating in a lot of these uh, capitalist money grabs. Um, and you know, it's just nice to kind of help out smaller brands that are trying to, uh, send to, to become major brands. And then kind of like your honeypot story, you can say, Oh, you know, I was a, I was a customer when you were down here and now you're worldwide or whatever. So that's why, um, the hoodie I'm wearing is from the, uh, it's called the, uh, the dirt label. They're from, uh, they're from Detroit and they use 
bears um, to uh, they use bears as to represent certain figures in pop culture. So like this is Batman. This came out when a new Batman movie came out. They had one for like John Morant, basketball player for the Memphis Grizzlies. So they got a bunch of stuff. So go to their Instagram, check them out. Not a subscriber. I mean, not a, not a sponsor by any means, not an ad, but just really like what they're doing. And just one of many sweatshirts that I'll be buying from them. But yeah, capitalism doesn't surprise me. The Juneteenth thing. Um, you th- would think that a lot of these companies learned from a lot of backlash that they received summer 2020 and then the 2021, but America gonna America. That's so. That's it. That not, needs to be on a shirt. Not surprised. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's exhausting. It is. Um, and I'm. Sure, and I know. You know, people. Oh, you know, you guys are insufferable, and we can't do anything to make you happy. Uh, but a lot of it comes down to who's in these decision rooms. Are you? really implementing the diversity because and that's why i emphasize the right black people um because the raw if you don't have the right black people in these boardrooms making these decisions you know they are it's hard to be a black person in corporate america it's hard to to speak up it because you know you don't you you have a livelihood you need to protect your livelihood you don't want to be that person it's very easy to be labeled as difficult when you're black and you speak up in a professional setting and it it's never really attributed to it's always attributed to race rather than you know professionally i'm i'm by the book this is why i'm going for it so sometimes as a black professional you're like i'm just going to keep my mouth shut and you do need those black people in places of decision making who aren't afraid to say this is a bad idea this is how you're going to offend black america and i think Again, it's very easy for a corporation to see, I don't see what we did wrong. Why can't we satisfy these people? Um, don't say these people. But <laughs> it's because you're looking at it from white lenses. And it's different. I think it's very, it's complex because I personally feel like I could work for a white company, a white corporation, and give white perspective. I'm not white. But so I've gone my entire life with white television, white, you know, seeing white culture. So not saying I'm a white specialist, but I can kind of see, I, I have an understanding, a, a loose translation of this is the expectation. This is what appeals to you fashion wise, blah, 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 blah. There hasn't been enough black culture in American society black culture mainstream that other cultures are seeking so it's like there are black things there are black shows but it's usually black people going to watch those things with the exception of music in that genre a lot of other races aren't exposed to us so they don't know how to think like we think and they're not supposed to like we we need to think for us so it's easy to sit in a boardroom and say this is a great idea this is us being inclusive we're going to come up with our own ice cream flavor for black people and celebrate juneteenth while they're scooping away at our pints it sounds like it would be i'm sure in a you know there's like a, a bob and a billy and judd and they're all in this room and they're like yeah let's do this but they're in arkansas and oh, there's arkansas arkansas which is really why it's called Arkansas, but I can tell you that history another time. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> um, so it's easy for these people to be sitting in a room and thinking this is a great idea. What do you We're, mean th- these people? I can say these people. Uh, they're th- the blacks are going to love this, and the blacks are going to feel like we support them mm, and we stand with them. The blacks. But no, that's that's not how you do it. And like you said, pushing other brands, recognizing that. We, black companies don't have the same advantages that white. They don't have the same capital backing. They don't have the same you know ability to get angel funding, investment. So they need the support of these big corporations. That is how you truly, properly Juneteenth. And yes, you're going to get people who are going to be offended. People that I used to do social media for several grocery chains and one of them in particular in the northeast they created specific labels and they put it on a brand that was black owned that was you know lesbian owned gay owned um asian whatever whatever was not white and of course i spent so much time filtering through comments of what about the white brand this is racist calling out and it's like people still don't get 
how many steps back other races are when they get into the game of business. So we need to be called out one for instances like the honeypot where we know this is a black owned woman and no offense to poise and pawns and all of those other brands that have been around for hundreds of years. We need to help build this brand so that they can have a, a fighting chance. That's what people, that's the point that people aren't getting. So they see it as a race thing and it's like, this isn't fair. They see it as calling out specific groups and it's not fair because they're left out, but it's like you're left out because you're you lead the pack and we're all just trying to catch up. So the intention is great, but I always think before these corporations do things that they think this is going to be beneficial for whatever other group it is, consult with someone. Like, I think I joked about it last season that I was going to become like a racial consultant, like a black racial consultant and just be like, you reach out to me when you have an idea for black people and I'm going to let you know if I think this is a good idea. I think, you know, I might need to pursue that because it's really important to approach it the right way. And when you get the backing of the black dollar correctly, you're, you're, you're good. Like I will say you get the Popeye's chicken sandwich, you get a Popeye's chicken sandwich. I will say. Target is probably one of the few corporations that has done it semi right. You know, they are your their commercials are calling out people who are Mexican American, Black American, gay, straight, whatever. They they are specific and very intentional. Tabitha has a clothing line that's come, Tabitha Brown has a clothing line coming out. So they're going out of their way to highlight people of different nationalities, races, backgrounds, ethnicities. They're doing that now. They're still you know the capitalist approach. But I feel like a lot of other corporations can afford to take a page from from how their their strategy is. But you need to have the diversity in the rooms that the decisions are being made. Be in the room where it happens, the baby. The room where it happens, because then you end up with these PR stunts. Y'all done wasted millions of dollars making this cheesecake red velvet ice cream that was probably good. And if you had just put it in a regular great value carton, people would have bought it. But yeah, and they did the same for Pride, if I'm not mistaken. It was like Twinkle something, like so. Ex like they, ex they're just. Ex it comes off as you're exploiting these groups to make a dollar, and once that day month is gone, on to the next one. Speaking of on to the next one, um, I think that's a good place to stop this episode of Jessica Vibes featuring David, because <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know if. There's a way to track uh, talk time. Um, but if there were and we had it, I would imagine you talked probably 70% of this. I'm sorry. I didn't mean But to. it's okay. It's all right. It's no problem. We're a team here at Rush Vibes. And sometimes you got to be able to feel when someone else is like basketball. Right? Like when somebody's got the hot hand, you keep feeding them. Yeah. You got the hot hands. So I just let you go with it. Thank you, boo. It's fine. Appreciate you. No problem. I mean, I got to edit some stuff out, but it's cool. Yeah. It's no, no different than than any other time um so hopefully this episode will drop wednesday uh that'll actually be june 1st so you may get to watch this on june 1st we dropped thursday last week two fridays before that so maybe we'll get back to wednesday this week uh but really at this point i'm just testing everything to see you know which days garner the most uh traffic and engagement so we'll see wednesday is uh, what's normal to us though but yeah, we're going to get out of here because we're about to get back on the road. So uh, we appreciate you guys. Subscribe to the YouTube. Turn your notifications on if you haven't yet. Uh, we're still six subscribers away from 100, which I feel like should be pretty attainable. So mm -hmm. if, if you watch us, haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. Share it with some friends. Uh, we dropped a couple of smaller clips before last week's episode dropped so on Facebook. So if you're not following us there, do so because that will kind of give you a sneak peek into uh, some of the more popular or more I don't know what we think are, are engaging segments of, of an episode. And then also, you know, we're there so you can kind of interact with us a little bit. So follow us on Facebook, Instagram, subscribe on YouTube. I'll turn notifications on. If you haven't, don't forget about Apple and Spotify. We on there too. Anything else? You look adorable. Huh? You look adorable. Appreciate that. I don't know if adorable was the look I'm going for, but hey, I'll take it. Uh, don't forget third label on Instagram. I'll link them below. Um, no, Biscuit? no, it's from Old Navy. Yeah, but he's awesome. a black artist. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, show him some love. So, I did a, a whole.
whole paper about him back in the day. Oh, wow. Back when I was doing my extended collegiate career. I miss it. I need to go back to school. Yeah, I, I, I don't miss it. So, um, yeah, Five Tribe, we appreciate you guys. We'll see you next week. We out of here. Be safe. Have happy. This is Friday before Memorial Sun. What day is it? What is it? Sunday? Sunday it's- before Memorial Day. So I, have, I hope you had a happy Memorial Day. And uh, on to June. Almost halfway through Shout the year. Shout out to dad who did not grill anything for Memorial Day. And almost uh, halfway through the year. And for That's everyone crazy. who did not invite us to a Memorial Day cookout barbecue. Or at least yourself to come get a plate. Like yeah. We, we, Y'all are slacking this year. I don't know yeah, what. We'll take, we'll take a it's plate. It's the monkey pox. We'll take a plate to go. But people, people, there's no. So when yeah. I see your plate on social media, I'm not going to like it. Yeah. All right. We out. Love Bye. y'all. Be good. Peace. Not too much growing pains. Growing some growing pains. Yeah. Not too much some growing pains. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. I done came way too far. Can't stop me now. Can't stop me now.